Tell us what is alter egos. What is the film about? Oh, Hit it. Oh, uh, well, they're kind of, there's kind of an A story and a B story, so I can tell my side of the story and you can tell your side of the story. I like to think of yeah, my side as the B A story. story. A, yeah, the B, I don't think that's I actually the right. The A story sure that's kind of what drives story. the film. Okay, try uh, to The A story, my side of the story, is about uh, superheroes uh, exist and they have kind of captured, they've captured all the supervillains and, and have kind of outstayed their welcome in society. And so people, the society is kind of, kind of getting tired of them and they're also very getting tired of um, spending their tax money to fund the superheroes. So the government is going to kind of cut their funding soon. So the superheroes have to come up with a plan to become relevant again. So see-through, that's my character, um, yeah, and he's Fridge, and we're kind of like the lower echelon of the super core, you know, kind of the, the, the foot soldiers. And so I'm transporting a, uh, a super villain to a new facility, and so I've got a scheme that I'm actually being, the head of the super core is making me kind of go through with this, and I have to kind of trap my best friend, see through, into kind of doing this um, event, which I don't want to give away, but shall I give it away? And that's just the first two minutes of the movie. Then after that, you're out of the. the no, well, I'm actually pretty not part really in the movie anymore after that. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't think we ever met before. I'm impressed. No, I'm really on yeah, set. I was in the so yellow. I don't know if it, oh, a lot of times, like, like a lot of it, most of the time. What's you, what, well, what, in my what end of it, well, the B, the B side of the story <laughs> is uh, uh, I, I'm Fridge, you know, this, this superhero on one hand who's come out to the Hamptons to deal with this, uh, this plot that Seathrough's kind of hatched to, um, to get our funding back. Uh, and at the same time, uh, I'm dealing with a personal crisis, which is that um, my alter ego or my real self, Brendan, who's just a you know, human civilian guy, uh, is having girlfriend problems, and um, I decide that I'm going to uh, dress up and hit on my own girlfriend as Fridge, uh, and uh, and she starts having an affair with me. So I'm cheating on myself with myself, uh, and I'm having a bit of a, a crisis about that, not knowing who she really likes more, whether it's the real me, but who is the real me? Is it the guy in the blue tights who can shoot ice out of his hands, or is it the, the normal little comic sketching dweeb who lives with his girlfriend? And then as the movie sort of uh, goes on, all these things, you know, see through his crazy plot and my personal crisis kind of intertwine and cause shenanigans. And what other types of superpowers do you have besides the, the shooting of ice? What, what do you uh, superheroes only have one superpower. I don't know if you know this. That's why we work together in the yeah. Super Four. Oh, and they're pretty. They're kind of realistic. So he he can shoot ice, and my character can simply see through things. He's uh, hence see through. He can only just. You can see. read lips pretty well too. Yeah, but that's more of an acquired skill. I don't yeah, know if that's, that's like true. Necessarily like a superpower. And I can read really fast. But that's also something that... I mean, not really fast. Like, not faster than the average person. But I can, I can read pretty quickly. But that was also not, never that's discussed sort of based in the on movie. me, though. That's that was just, just something real, that you... That's something I had on your own. That didn't make it into no the No one film. talked about that. Okay, yeah. No, right. that was never oh, brought up in the film. Just does he move his lips when he reads? Or is he actually so skilled that he doesn't move his lips? I don't know. I need to get a mirror out. And I always thought of your character as illiterate. And I think it kind of comes oh, wait. across that way in the film. What did I say? I said I could read really fast? Maybe it, maybe it's that I'm illiterate. Maybe yeah, that's my other... That illiterate. could be my other, my other superpower, is, is, is illiteracy. Illiteracy. Fighting yeah. illiteracy with illiteracy. Exactly. I'm gonna, yeah. you should write, can we write that down? As I know there's a t-shirt idea maybe in the future. <laughs> fighting illiteracy with illiteracy. <laughs> Joey Kern's Kid Project. <laughs> Kern's Kids. Can't read. Kern's Kids can't quite... Read. All K's. All And for see-through, our K's down. Read is called the K. <laughs> Creed. Remember those x-ray glasses? Is that something yeah. that's part of his thing? Or no, he can that, actually that's see. That's more of his disguise. Totally unnecessary. That's something he just would bring to set every day. He would say, Joey, <laughs> please get wear, wear those yellow glasses. And he'd just sneak them on. Oops, is the camera rolling? <laughs> no, we needed something because he had the mask. And so you needed, we needed something to kind of say, okay, this guy's incognito um, because, but you never see, you don't really see my character. I guess you see him outside of this costume, but just at the beginning and the end. 
of the film. So we needed something to, when he's in public, you know, he, but it became kind of a, a nuisance because the camera would always reflect on the on the plastic of the of the goggles. Yeah, Chris Lovisor at the DP, he really hated those glasses. And it sucked for me too because I would have to kind of tilt my head and say, okay, I can't see the camera now. And then I would have to do the scene without moving my head too much so that the reflection of the, but I, I have amazing stillness. But a lot of people have asked me, is Joey playing a robot in this movie with a, this, uh, with a tilted head issue? And I had to explain to them, no, no, you are not a robot in this film. I feel like I look really natural when I do it. Yeah, a little bit robotic. A little robotic, actually. Like a natural robot. Yeah, sometimes people start messing with it the, because the, they think the, this frame is frozen. In the, it's the stillness of that yeah, character. Yeah, it's odd. It's just a very odd thing that you have to do. Like very weird. It. To well, when it's the A story, you know what I mean? You really got to ground the film. And I feel like that grounded it. Next question. How did the two of you become involved with Alter Egos? Did you have to audition? Were you just chosen? Were you the chosen? We were actually, it was actually written for us. Uh, we had uh, worked with Jordan Gallon before in his first film, and um, when he sat down to kind of start this process with, with Alter Egos, he wrote it with us in mind, and I think he kind of touched base with us before he even really started writing it, to kind of pitch the idea to us and see if we, um, if we, if it kind of spoke to us and kind of, you know, helped let us kind of uh, um, influence where we thought we wanted our characters to kind of go with it. So, yeah, we were kind of involved from the from the get go with it. It was nice. Ditto. That is true. That is true. <laughs> what he says is true. Chris. It, well, yeah, we were involved. I, I remember it was right around uh, Christmas time. I feel like I'm talking to Jordan almost daily. Yeah. However many years ago this was about. He would, uh, you know, email the script over, and then you would have ideas about it, and Jordan yeah. would contribute, look, change it a little bit, then I'd read it, and we'd get on the phone, and we'd change it. He was, you know, we were going back and forth and talking almost daily for a while there, and he, he, um, I think he really wanted to make sure that you and I both wanted to do it, because that, th that was a big part of actually doing the whole film, was that he just, with the three of us, were going to get together again, and when we worked on a, the movie, the first film that Joy was talking about, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are undead. I, uh, we, we had a, I mean, at least speaking for myself, I, we had, I had such a great time working on that movie and working with Jordan, and I love the way Jordan works, and I, I really thought the movie was funny, and, and, um, and I think he did too, and I'm sure you had a good time, and so it was just like really kind of like hungry to like get back and just, I mean, I would have done, if Jordan had said, I have no script whatsoever, we're going out to the middle of the desert, we'll be shooting for three months, I don't know, we may never come back, I would have said, all right, let's do it, why not? It's just has yeah, a great... It's a fun I love, atmosphere. Yeah, I love working with Jordan. Yeah. It, it was, we, we had a good time. We were able to kind of mess around with the script a little bit and, you know, um, do a couple takes that were a little bit looser and, you know, so it was, it was, it, it was, it was easy. It, we had a lot of fun with each other. So how did Kevin Smith and the Smart cast get involved with uh, Alter Egos and what kind of support did they offer? I have no idea. I <laughs> just, I don't know how they got involved. They, 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 they uh, Kevin Smith's Smart cast has a deal with Phase 4 who acquired our film and they are partnering up on a certain number of films and so uh, yeah Kevin you know Smith has tweeted about it a number of times which I think you know he's got a, a legion of fans that uh, um, but I don't know specifically, you know, how much, how much Kevin has personally been involved. Um, I mean, I know putting his name on it is one yeah. of the first things most people even mention to me about the movie. So that just in and of itself has been a major boost for the movie. That's it's just him saying Kevin Smith presents, putting it on a poster, putting it in the trailer. People get very excited. He's got a really dedicated group of folks that follow him and love him and, you know, or waiting for whatever he's you know got coming next, so that's been nice. And I think he's looking for now in his career, from what I understand, is that he's trying to um, help push and and, and generate um, younger uh, filmmakers. That kind of kind of how he started. And so Jordan Galland is, is kind of one of those. And I think he's excited about. And Kevin's been excited about you know promoting our film and you know like Chris said, his legion of fans and and that's that's really helped us. I think for sure. Have either of you been to the Smod Castle? The Smod Castle? I didn't know there was such a thing as a Smod Castle. What is I'm going to get on the phone my manager right now. <laughs> Why haven't I been to the Smod Castle? That... Well, you mentioned Twitter. Are either of you 
on Twitter, and if you are, what's your regularity in tweeting? I'm not on Twitter, so no. I can get that out of the way right away. <laughs> Uh, that's a that's a no no uh, no I don't I read Twitter for for some news but I don't really tweet very often I have a Facebook page that um, I've been touting alter egos a lot and that that's uh, you know that's been kind of fun to hear people's reactions and, um, but I don't really do I don't think either of us do a whole lot of like self promoting in that arena. Do you think that's part of an actor's job in terms of being in a part of a project? Are they there just to be on set and to then when they're done walk away or continue with promoting it? After well, I think obviously we you know we enjoy promoting and that's why we're here. So yeah. I, I I don't I do not enjoy well promoting it. You're not very good at it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't think it's part of the actor's job to be honest. I think it is. It sure. is now. It's expected of actors a yeah. lot more, and I and I think that. Uh, it's understood to be part of an actor's job. So in saying that technically now, it, it, it's part and parcel of when you sign on to do a movie, you are expected to be doing a certain amount of promotion. Me personally though, I don't think that's the way it should be and I don't think it is part of an actor's job. I think an actor primarily is there to be performing and do a great job and on set and then that's when your job ends. You're like Mr. Pink in, in Reservoir Dogs. I don't believe in tipping. Yeah, it's for the birds. You know it's what funny, I, mean? I was just thinking about that scene just today. There's no similarity to what I'm saying right now. It's very saying, similar. No, it's not. Nothing you I, look like I'll Mr. Pink, actually. Except my, weird. how much I look like Mr. Pink. You look a that. lot like Steve Buscemi. In a I dental really way, mostly. I think tipping is very, tipping is very, very important thing to do. Not promoting, though, however. On you, the other hand, he promotes like crazy, never tips. Never, not, never won't, I won't love put a tipping. tip down for anybody. I think that, you know, if you do a studio film, it's, it's in your contract. You have to do, you know... I'm not debating that you, you, you're expected to do it and it is in your contract. I'm just saying. I don't think it is part of an actor's job, theoretically speaking. But it is, in reality, totally part of your job yeah. now. Exactly. Well, I mean, everyone wants their film to be, to be exposed and to, you know, to get out there. And I think that actors nowadays have... How much good do you think promoting does for an actor, though, to, for a film? Like you, are you watching TV and you see this interview on TV? Do you go out and watch Alter Ecos because of you and me sitting on the couch? Well, I think that I probably, yeah, maybe. More so than if I see, if I don't see that. I kind of feel like it's just like it's that you guys probably know better than me, but I think it's sort of just a self-supporting yeah, industry. Where it's just people are, you know, we're actors, we're looking to self-promote and to a certain extent you guys need someone to interview and you just say we all sort of work together and, and, and basically take up space in this world. But we don't, we, we, I don't know how much good this does for uh, uh, the film. Well, I think that if you, if you see, if, it, if there's an actor that promotes a film, it, it makes you think, oh, you know what, I like that actor, he really likes this film, I'm, I'm gonna go see it, because if this person But there's person no genuine, really I mean, you, I'm not allowed to, you know, if I'm Johnny Depp, for example, mm -hmm. and I go on some late night talk show that's gonna have a wide audience of people watching it, I'm not allowed to say, I hated this movie. So it's right. disingenuous, everybody says I love the movie, so no one's even paying attention, there's it's just different, but you can, you can kind of tell, you can tell when an actor likes or doesn't like a film, you know? They can, you, can, they can, you can kind of... By that rationale, then, if you're expecting an actor to promote and he doesn't actually like the movie, then he's doing the film a disservice by going and promoting it. I think that that's why sometimes they, they ask an actor not to do that. Or, or a big-time actor may say, look, I don't like this film. I'm not going to be very good at promoting it, so don't ask me to go do these, these interviews. I mean, look at Leonardo DiCaprio. How often do you see him do interviews and things like that? Very, very rarely. And I think it's... Pro I don't know, but I imagine it's because... He hates he, all the movies. He does, <laughs> no, I imagine because he doesn't enjoy Just, he doing makes it. terrible movies. And it's not going to help, I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, interesting. I mean, I always think that when you reach a certain level of fame, that if you really hate going out and doing the talk shows and everything, you can finally just say, I'm not doing it. I think you're right. And nobody cares because you're a big enough name at that point in time anyways. It's true, but every studio would want, you know, even the bigger the, bigger, the better, they want that, that person to go No, on. no doubt about it. I know they all want that. I think that's one of the reasons Johnny Depp is the mega star that he is, is his willingness to just yeah. promote, 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 promote. Exactly. Do you feel though that beefing up your social media might help in some sense? It seems like casting directors and, and even studios are looking at people's Twitter following and even like people are paying to beef up their IMDb meter. Yeah. I, I, wow, really? I didn't even know that. This is amazing. Yeah, That's like the, um, star meter. How do I get them? What do I do? I pay to beef up the star meter? Who do I pay? IMDb? Or do I pay like thousands Someone of people to go and click on my page? Yeah. No, you gotta, it's like, that meter is, is I think, uh, five people that like look you up online. 
or at certain on certain engines and stuff. And so I think it. Uh, Interesting. <laughs> how how boost up is, is your Twitter account? How many people are you paying to boost your Twitter account? A lot, I'd say. Yeah. I'd say I'd say that you have a lot of Twitter followers. Roscoe tweets. 750 times a day. Most of them are just single character <laughs> tweets, like an N or a P, but he's tweeting or more like a something on the yeah, keyboard. Yeah, sometimes you get that. Yeah. Uh, I think that, 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 that a lot of actors out there are really great self-promoters and, and directors and things like that, and I think that that's great, you know what I mean? If that's how, if they feel like that's how they need their, to help their careers, that's fantastic. I, I, I hope that that doesn't become the norm you know, and I hope that that doesn't, um, I mean, you know, it's, it's business. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, like, just to get back to what we were talking about before, doesn't a certain amount of self-promotion turn you off? Like, don't you think the best form of self-promotion is making good stuff? And that when you, when you have a certain friend, you know, we don't need to mention names or anything, but friend X or something, mm -hmm. who every time he does anything, you get a text saying, like, Joey, I'm so proud of this movie I made. Please come out and support. Please turn into CBS at 9 p.m. to watch this. Come to my art show, whatever. And it, it's always sort of mediocre stuff. Don't you kind of just look at it and kind of disregard it eventually and think like, oh, God, all this guy does. It becomes like white himself. noise, right. definitely. So I, I don't know. See, I, I think that, that the best form of promotion is, is good work. And then, you know, I feel like there's got to be a lot of people who feel like me and feel like you about this, that when self-promotion is kind of a turn-off, it makes me, it, it takes a, 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 a sort of a notch off my desire to sort of be uh, a spectator with whatever they're sort of trying to shove down my throat. I, I, I feel like sort of, you know, uh, letting the work speak for itself is one of the more appealing things about about an artist or, or anybody who's in the entertainment business, whether they're an artist or not. Um, making good work is, is great, and if somebody's really trying to force me to see their work, it makes me suspicious about how good the work could possibly be. Yeah, but I think also, even now, it goes beyond the work, and it's about people kind of letting others into their lives, you know? There's, well, it's yeah, like that's a whole other thing. tweeting and, and yeah. saying, like, well, I'm, you know, I just got out of the guitar store. I'm gonna go play my guitar now. At the gym. And then all these like tw like tweeners are like, oh my god, he plays a guitar, you know, and it it's, it's, it it has nothing to do with their. Oh, that's really work. unfair because I was just writing that I played the guitar because I just wanted people to know, you know, I wasn't necessarily writing for all those tweeners. Well, yeah. But God bless. That's him. how you come. It's really across. nice. That response is just always great. <laughs> do you think there's a way to tastefully promote where it's not that used car salesman element where it doesn't seem so sleazy, but then still getting the word out that. Hey, alter egos is playing at the. I think the only, like what, what I was saying, the only way to, to tastefully self promote, I think, is if you make good work first and foremost, and you are legitimately proud of something, and then you are not a reckless self promoter to begin with. If you very rarely hit me up and you know, tweet or text me or whatever, that that one moment when you do call me up and say, "Hey, um, I made this thing. I'm really proud of it." Um, I would love for you to go see it because I think you're going to really enjoy it and I, I want people to see it. I'm really proud of this. It means a lot to me, I would say. Wow, okay, great. This is obviously something that's really important to Joey and I'll go see it. Um, to me, the only way to really tastefully promote is to very rarely self-promote. It's got to be, it just has to be genuine and, and if, you, if, if you're convinced that you're every single droplet of sweat that comes off of your body is brilliant and, and worth me <laughs> inspecting under a microscope, uh, I'm probably not going to be on board when you, when you, you know, promote the one thing that's actually really good. Yeah, but, but also, I mean, to, to play devil's advocate, I think that, you know, if I have a Twitter account, and I, and I do, I don't have many followers, but, uh, but if I were trying to get followers, people that are, are following my Twitter account, they are specifically following it so that they can get information. They want to know everything that I'm doing, and you know, and you can make the information that I give across, give out can be, you know, just like business. Like, hey, I've got this new film out. Like, I really like it. Here's a clip from it. Here's an article. You know, here's a link to a to an interview I did, kind of thing. People, people that are following me, that's why they're following because they want I see to what know you're those saying. If you do have a Twitter <clears throat> account that basically is just an, it's 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 an arm of your promotional machine. Basically. Yeah. If I text you, you know what I mean, like we, like 
if if I text you, that's annoying. You yeah. know what I mean? Because then I'm just kind of like getting in your space, and you're not. I guess maybe I it. even misunderstand what Twitter is even for. Maybe Twitter's, that is what Twitter's for. It is. Maybe t- people are just expecting Twitter to just be this kind of barrage of They They follow people for specific reasons, and you can always unfollow somebody. Right. You know? so, I, I, so I'm following you on Twitter because I want you to be tweeting things like, hey guys, new television show's exactly. coming out. Hey guys, I'm on yes. uh, CSI this week. Or, hey like guys, I, I, I follow like Louis C.K. on Twitter because he may say, hey, a whole new batch of tickets just opened up for the L.A. show, you know, and like, here's a link to go get them. Right. You know, and then I'm like one of the first, you know, I, I, that's, that's the first information that's being put out. It's like instant, instant information. I may not be properly qualified to comment on Twitter then. I don't spend enough time on Twitter, yeah. obviously, to really know what it's about. What if there comes a point in both of your careers where you will be required to divulge personal things on social media as a way of keeping people even more in the loop about your brand? That was the most terrifying <laughs> sentence I have ever heard in my entire life. I know that there were words that you put together yeah, there. That it just I tuned out halfway through, and a sense of horror just yeah. invaded my stomach. We're not reality I, stars. I got <laughs> you know? So terrified. I all, I need the cat. Can I hold the cat? I need to cuddle the cat. I'll hold you. I'll hold. I got you. Buddy. Thank you. No one's gonna Thank know anything you. about you. No one's gonna need to know anything about you. For you. When did you start sucking your thumb? I was about two weeks ago, actually. Why did I highly recommend it. it. Do you I feel like maybe it. that's not okay. bad? Don't divulge that to anyone. I'm assuming the answer then is that that wouldn't be part. I tell you, but there's a siren. The police are on their way. Oh gosh, yeah. You want to jump in this? What we were talking about. Um, Divulging personal information about yourself to to somehow increase the appeal of your brand. Yeah, I think that that's fine. Can I have as, a brand? As long, What's yeah, your brand? This. Ooh, I like it. I'll take it. I think as long as it's not, if it's, as long as it's not real, as long as it's not true, people can know anything they want to know about me. You know, explain that sentence. Well, if it makes it makes someone feel like they like me better because they because they know that I can joke. So if someone was going to say something like a lie about you, like Joey Kern's a womanizer, not that you're not I a womanizer, say, I wouldn't want that you would want you to be okay with that. I wouldn't want it to be derogatory, but if someone said like, "Oh, Joey eats like French toast every morning," you know, and that's not true, but if that makes someone like me more. And they go go rent my movie, then that's fine if they if they want to. But I think it's much more likely that, that people are going to have sort of the, those those sort of salacious kind of uh, details about you are much more appealing. Well, that's I think the that stuff those, that's going to get around. That, well, that's true or not. Yeah, but that that's out of my control. You know what I mean? If people feel like they need to know that information about people, but would you ever divulge it, it yourself? Out? Like no. if you felt if your if your publicist was like Joey. If you come forward and you confess your drug problem or marital infidelities or whatever, that's good. People are going to love you for that. No. Then you're right. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. I got to agree with that. I think you know. Should do that. If they should, I think they, Terrence Malick does it. Well, I think in terms of people who handle their career and, and publicity-wise, I think Terrence Malick does a, does, a, does a wonderful job. Why? Because you don't know anything about him. Well, because he doesn't feel to me that doesn't seem he feels an obligation to go out and. Malik, I feel like he doesn't feel an obligation to go, to go out and promote and make appearances and divulge personal details about himself. But still, I know his name and you know his name. I'm sure everybody here knows his name. Very, very popular guy. He, I mean, in terms of, you know, in his career, makes, you know, movies, get, works with great people, has a lot of money for his films. His films make a decent amount of money. He, do, he seems to sort of sidestep that machine, the publicity machine altogether, and it doesn't seem to hurt him at all. I think it's also, I agree with you, and I think it's, it's, it's very detrimental for an actor to, for people to know too much about them personally, because we play characters, you know, and, and every character we play, we bring a little bit of ourselves to it, you have to. But if someone knows too much about me, they won't be able to watch me on film and say, that's oh, I, I'm losing myself, that's that character. You know, sometimes, and I, I think he's a great actor, but Tom Cruise, I watch Tom Cruise now, and I don't necessarily watch um, the character that he's playing, you know, because I know too much about his personal life. And it's interesting. I mean, it's, da- it's a danger that I guess can happen to any actor if you become uh, famous enough in this era. Anyone's going to want to know personal things about you, and it's very difficult to keep those things close to the chest exactly. anymore. I think it, it, it's, it's detrimental to an actor, their career. It's, it's like when, when you're watching a friend. We have a lot of friends that are actors, and when you're watching them, sometimes it's hard to lose yourself and see them because you know them too well. 
to really lose yourself. Oh, I agree. It's like, yeah, totally agree. Yeah, you just always want to call bullshit. Yeah. Because you're like, you're not a tough guy. You're not shooting. Like, look at you pointing a gun. Like, yeah. You know what you're doing. But everyone around you is like, everyone watching it's like, oh my God, that guy's terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever felt a uh, competitiveness from other actors at auditions? And if so, how do you handle that? Suppose you walk into a room and there's like 10 of you there. Mm -hmm. How do you keep that game face on so that you don't let them... I mean, it's just human nature to probably feel insecure. Yeah, you know, I think it's kind of silly for actors to be to be competitive with each other. I mean, everyone's nervous in that situation. And the audition room has a unique kind of uh, tension to it anyways. But, you know, you're really not competing against each other, you know? You're kind of competing against yourself. And so I think when people do get competitive, they try to psych the other person out, you know? And I think that's just kind of dirty. But from my experience, I don't think guys, I don't think men do it very often, but I've heard that females in, in the audition room can, can kind of get kind of nasty, some of them. I think they feel a little bit more competitive than, than dudes, don't you think? Yeah, I haven't experienced too much. I, every once in a while I've seen somebody in an audition room doing something so odd and kind of obnoxious that I mm. thought to myself, maybe that guy's trying to psych everybody else out or distract me or do something like that. Uh, but no, typically, I agree with you that it's m more everybody's kind of in their own universe and, and they're nervous for their yeah. own reasons and they're, you're more trying to do your own thing as best as you can possibly do it. Um, and... Uh, like There's that. enough ways that people are going to self-destruct on their own. They don't yeah. need help from anybody else in audition. Auditions are incredibly stressful, difficult situations. I feel like most people are <clears throat> worried enough about their own thing, or at least concentrated enough on their own thing, to not be thinking about how to mess up the guy next to you. It's yeah. just sort of... Uh, I at least actually, in my experience, but maybe, I don't know, maybe you and I... I would like it. if it was more competitive. If they are like, alright, we're going to bring you guys in, alright, now you do it, alright, now you do it. I, you know, he take just your, did it take better. Take your tops off and fight. <laughs> when you're done with that, we'll go in the audition room. I, I like to come out of the audition room and be like, all right, great. No, I'll have my agents <laughs> read the contracts then. All right, I can't wait. wait I'll see you, you guys on set. That does happen. Good luck, there, everybody. There, hey, there, good luck, everybody. There is some psych out that goes on with, like, the guy who walks out of the room. Everyone's uh, watching what he's doing. You know, there's a guy who comes out with his sides and he immediately throws him in the trash. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just throws him in the trash and goes storming out. And you're like, okay, well, that maybe didn't go so well. Yeah. Then there's a the guy that comes out and he's just so smart. He's like, all right, guys. Huh? Everybody? Great. Break hey, a leg, guys. Break a leg. Break a leg, Everybody man. Break a leg. You're like, well, oh, fuck you, asshole. Uh, but you know who you are. You know who you are, break a leg guy. Stop saying it. Stop <laughs> saying it. That's it. So what's your process when you do leave after you hear great work, great job, thank you, we have your information? Do you obsess I over tweet it? it instantly. <laughs> I tweet going to gym had rocked that audition. Just cried internally. Uh, I don't know. Just degraded myself. I have definitely have been that guy that walks out and has like ripped the pages. Oh, you know, sure. on my way out. Sure. And and I book that job sometimes. I have. It's, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, you just you just don't know. It's so awful sometimes as an actor. You know, walking into a room. It's like having a job interview. That's what I equated to. I think everyone, most people, can understand what a job interview is like. But it's one of those job interviews where they say, oh my God, you're perfect for this job. You have the wrong hair color, so you can't be the president of the United States, kind of thing. Um, and it's, it's kind of depressing in, in that way, but it, um, I think you train yourself as an actor to once you walk out that door, you forget about it. You totally, I've been called and said, hey, you- I don't know how good you are at that, you I'm had, not good at that. I've, had, I've been called and be like, I you, you had an audition, you got that job. I'm like, what job? And they're like, it's for this movie. And like. I don't remember what that was. And they're like, it's the, remember you auditioned for last week? And I have to like, kind of go through my notes and be like, oh, cool, yeah, no, I remember that. Because I've trained myself to just not care. Because you, you, it will just eat you. you know? Oh, yeah, I'm, 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 I haven't, I've got to actually, you should maybe do a class that I could take and train myself <laughs> to not care. Because I still, I'm, I'm very tortured by the whole thing. I, Auditioning you know. for me is a horribly painful, difficult thing. I always say to myself, uh, and other people too, and now anyone who will listen, um, that if and when I get to a point where I'm, you know, creatively in control of a project in terms of casting and hiring people, that I just want to revolutionize the audition process because I think it's a totally, it's not a very constructive it's it's not very process, good. and you're not really finding the best people for the work. You're kind of just finding good auditioners, which isn't reflective of what, what, yeah, what, the, yeah, what it's like on set. Yeah. on set. Yeah. yeah. 
So I'd just like to, I think the whole thing needs to change. I, I don't, I, I don't, I think it's, it's, it's gotten to a really weird place. I think people are also lazy with, um, on the other side of the camera, they're lazy with watching someone's reel, with watching someone's previous work. You know, I, I, I wouldn't hire somebody, you know, I wouldn't even ask someone to come in and, and take an interview unless I'd read their resume, you know, and, and kind of, you know, read, you know, if I was, read some of the, the, the what they've done, you know. Um, I think it's it's kind of a, a lazy thing, and, and people just want to hear their own material coming out of that person's mouth, and I, I think that, you know, there's a, there's room for that, but I always equate it. It's like have auditioning is kind of like having a math teacher give an English test. You know, they're both teachers, but it's a whole different subject. You know. I'm waiting. I mean, I'm waiting to find out if one day I'm somebody who has to. Thank you. Thanks. Cool. That's not. It's good. That's not distracting at all. Actually, this is. It's, there are a lot of sirens around here. Like yeah, said, it's it's amazing. Amazing. yeah, I like to keep. But it I, I, I'm waiting to find out. Like one day, if I'm in that position where I'm you know, directing or producing something, and um, if and when, I, I'm waiting to find out that maybe there's a reason why the casting process is, to me, what seems very backward and weird. But there, there might be a reason. I mean, I might be that guy sitting there thinking, like, I just don't have time to do this. I can't read everybody's resume. I can't watch your reel. I'm sure. trying to do things and just. You know, and 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 I don't care who the best actor is. I'm just waiting for someone to come in the room and not melt down. Yeah, and you're right, right, you can have the role. I just need to get this movie made. You know, and I, everybody, I guess, is stressed out in their own way. But I, to me, right now, from somebody who strictly has seen the audition process from the point of the auditioner, uh, right? Not the audition E. Am I the audition E? Or am I the auditioner? I'm the audition E. Oh. Well, the auditioner is the person who's auditioning me, right? Yeah. And I am auditioning, so I am the audition E. Yeah, Doesn't matter. Uh, from the point of view of the actor who's going in on, and auditioning, um, we'll just cut that out. Uh, Start now. And that's what I think. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it seems weird to me. I don't like I don't like the process. This was an audition right now. Oh, good. Did I get you the role? Did not get the, no, I didn't. Didn't get it. Didn't no. get it. Right. Do you have any, anybody have some sides I can rip up and throw in the trash? The, these were the sides. Oh. You said every word wrong. Oh boy. Oh boy. That hurts. But I was going to say, this is like, it's it, this, you know, this, another phenomenon about auditioning that's uh, hilarious is when you are in the room and you're waiting and there's a person goes in and it's 25 minutes, that person, that they come out and do the thing, like, okay, good. And the next person goes in and 15, 20 minutes go by. And you're conscious of the time that each guy is spending in the room and yeah. you get in there and suddenly you do it and you feel like, okay, that went well. They're like, great, thanks. You've done like one scene, yeah. and you're done, and you walk out the room. There's that a that feeling where you're thinking to yourself, "What the hell? I was in there for like three minutes, maybe." Is it yeah. just you? And then you try to rationalize it. You're like, maybe time just seemed to pass really quickly because I was in the auditioning room. But when I'm outside of the room, then maybe it doesn't. And then there's the walk of shame to go get your like keys exactly. and like bang. I think it's all the guys like, "Wow, the other guy was in there for 20 minutes. Yeah. You were in there for about what 25 happened? seconds. What happened to you?" <laughs> and I always try to also rationalize because I'm like, okay, either they think I did a really bad job, I or maybe I did so amazing that they we just can't change that. Well, there's nothing we can say. I, yeah, that's the worst. I um, forgot what I was going to say about auditioning. It sounds good, though. Yeah. I think that's all we need. I think we got enough from you there. <laughs> I think that was pretty solid. You know, what was I going to say? Um, about like, you can like hear the other people on the audition. That is enough for what we'll say. When you did like, a comedy bit about that. sorry to interrupt, but you did a comedy bit about hearing. Oh yeah, people. did you see that online? Yeah, yeah, I do like some stand up about it. Yeah, um, about like people that walk in and try to kind of psych you out. You know, like the guy that that comes in with like a motorcycle helmet, although he like drove his car there. Right. You know, and he's like all tussled, and he's like, oh, is there, I need to put my motorcycle down on this chair. My motorcycle helmet down on this chair because it needs its own space. You know, and. And there's this, like, the whole idea of like hearing someone because it's like it like psychs you out a little bit and stuff. I go watch it. It's on YouTube. I'll watch it. Yeah, I'll check yeah. it out. I like it. I wanted to say something. Do else you feel about self-conscious that. about though in those rooms where you know the walls are so thin? Like, as oh, I had an audition yeah. where it was all girls and I was the only one reading this one guy's part, and all the girls' parts were just very conversational. Yeah. But they would go in the room and I could word for word hear oh, them talking, yeah. just being like, "Well, Molly, I think we should go to the store and buy bread." Really? Yeah, we need some bread. Like, you just I'm like, I can hear bread. everything. Yeah. <laughs> and then yours is like a scream. <laughs> Mine is screaming like, "No, God damn it, no, please, just have mercy on me!" And it's like three.
three things. I'm like crying oh, and screaming. No. And I get in the room and I'm just thinking of all of these girls out yeah. there and being like, oh, great. Here we go. Oh, that's the but that is kind of a process of where you have to willfully be able to just shut down a certain part of your brain and say like, all right, screw it. I'm not going to be concentrating on that. It I'm going to concentrate on this exclusively, which yeah. you can do with varying levels of success. I find, I find that when... You know, people always say, "Oh, it's so that that actor's so brave," you know, in their work, and I and I find that you know there there is a lot of um, um, bravery and, and and commitment that it takes to when you're when you're actually working. But I feel like auditioning it takes so much more bravery because you're putting yourself out there for someone to say you 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 did a good job or you did a bad job. You know, and with, even more so than um, than acting. You know, when you actually have the job, when you're auditioning. You're, you, you know, you can tell right away when someone, is, you know, is like, oh, okay, oh, all right, thanks a lot, thanks for coming in. You know, you can tell right away, oh, that person didn't like that, what I just did, my mm -hmm. choices, you mm -hmm. know, and, and it's so, I don't know, it, it takes a lot more um, chutzpah to kind of go in and audition than, than actually having the job. It's, and it's, I think it's a totally different skill set. Auditioning too. and then doing the work. Yeah. They're, they're related in certain respects, but they're very, very different. And I think some people, like we were saying before, are incredibly good at auditioning and then not necessarily that great as a performer at the end of the day, no. um, and vice versa. And there are people who just absolutely can't audition, but are really nice actors at the end of the day. Um, and it, it's, it's just, it's, yeah, exactly. it's strange that that is the portal that you have to walk through in order to mm -hmm. be able to do the work. And it's, it's almost like, you know, and they, they do classes where they, you know, there's classes about acting classes, then there are specific, here is an auditioning class, yeah, exactly. and the things to do and not to do. And I, I was studying at NYU, and I wish we had had audition class. We never had audition it's class. It's probably invaluable. I think it is. I think I Have you ever gone in and sat own. in a casting office as a volunteer to read and things like that, Definitely. just to see what it, see, I've always wanted to never oh, done yeah. it. Apparently it's incredibly disturbing. No, it's it's. it's well, I mean, so it's informative, but you also see like you see yes. things, and you, you realize very quickly that oh, that actor should not have. Oh God, he's already yeah, fucked himself. See, and he just exactly. he doesn't even start reading the lines yet. He's walked in. Yeah, you 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 see that it's it's good to just kind of walk in, you know, be kind of neutral, say hi, don't try to do too much, and just do your thing and walk out. Right. You know, and some I have I've been on the other side of the, on the on the other side of the camera, and it is. It is very interesting. It is very... Um, I mean, what do you think is the number one, can, if you could even say this, the number one mistake that actors make when they go into it? Like, that you, could, that you could say, like, don't do this, please. I, I think the, the, just kind of on a general note, I think it's, it's and, I, and I've been guilty of this, is, is trying too much. Right. Trying to be their best friend, trying to crack too many jokes, right. um, trying to... Uh, you know, letting your nerves kind of take over mm -hmm. and, and trying to distract, you know, from that. I think it's best to just kind of come in, hey, how are you? You know, let me let me do this. And um, Do you think it's important to have your lines memorized? Do you, does it bother you people are just reading off a page if they're doing a great job? I, you know, I think that if you're doing... It depends on the, what you're what you're doing, but yeah, no, I think definitely should be memorized. Mm -hmm. I think you should always hold your your script, mm -hmm. but I think you know I'm I'm always memorized. You know, I think that that definitely. Um, I am too, but sometimes I just feel like maybe if I did, was less concerned and I just went in there and just casually just held a piece of paper that just looked like a badass. Like he doesn't give a shit. Look at that. He just walks. And and, and not necessarily be concerned about getting the lines right. No, that's so no. But you're you're getting the lines right because they're there. You're just reading them off the page. You're just not so concerned with having it memorized and like having created a performance. You know, you're kind of just in there, just doing the thing with the reader. Well, I think I think it, I think yeah. I think at the end of the day, you have to walk in and you know, even if you if you rehearsed and rehearsed and rehearsed it, I think at the end of the day, you got to go in and just you know, do it with a performer. You know, do it with the other the other the reader. You know, I think that, and I've been guilty of this, is kind of like making it what I you know. Here's my audition. I shaped it like this. This is exactly what I want to bring in, and I bring yeah. it in, and it's there's no life to it. You know, maybe I hit the beats right, but there there's no life to it. You know, auditioning is so weird. That's another thing. I mean, you're reading with somebody who typically is not another actor, and they're like reading like or this, just reading like, words like, a piece of paper. And then I love you too. Well, why did you kill my father? Right. That's how I was going to do this scene, though, anyway. <laughs> when I did that piece, I remember the one you're talking about. I did it exactly like that. Yeah. yeah. Nailed it. Nailed it. Do you think Hollywood is made up of a large group of class clowns? Hmm. Were you all class clowns growing up? 
or were you more of the introverted one watching from afar? It's hmm. an interesting question. Silently uh, thinking, uh, judging, whatever. Just judging. I think that Hollywood is made up of um, every single type of person. I don't think that, 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 I think that that's why we go to see movies. I think that we don't, um, or, you know, watch TV. Everybody's different, you know, and I think that, um, I think for the most part, people in Hollywood have learned that they that are a little bit, um, they have to be energetic, you know, and, and, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're, they're not introverts. I think there are a lot of introverts here. I think that, I think there's every, every type here, you know, I think that that's why, um, I think that that's why there, there's diversity. I'm Joey Kern and I approve this message. I'm Joey Kern and I approve Hollywood. Yeah. What do you think, Chris? Do you have anything to add? To that? I don't know. I don't I think it, yeah. That's you don't really have any friends. You don't really I don't get really out. Really get people, out there. So yeah. Well, how would you know? Have to, I don't do this. Is a lot of talking I've done here. This is the first time people have been talking. Right, your to vocal cord is still working. Yeah, it's sore. It's yeah, sore. Yeah, you know what? It needs a beer. Maybe it would be really nice if someone could. Don't get drunk. Um. Yeah, I think that there's, I agree, I mean, that it's as cheesy as it was phrased. I think it's, it's definitely this true that it is made up of, a, there's, a, there's a wide variety of people here. There are a lot of, it's, what's, what's interesting to me is that I, I sometimes find that there are different types of people who will look down on another group of people for their motivations in doing what they're doing. And it, the entertainment industry, there are a lot of class clowns. There are a lot of people who are just like, look at me, I just want people to look at me, I just want to be looked at and admired and, and loved. And then there are people who are stereotypically a little bit more introverted and, and are, they say, I don't, you know, I want to make good work, I want to make challenging, truthful work, and it's not about who's looking at me, it's about what I'm bringing forward. And I often find that the people who feel that way about truth and beauty and being, you know, honest and I always look down on those people who are just like, I just want to, I'm just trying to have a good time. Um, and the people who are trying to have a good time are always looking down on the people who are just trying to sort of pull something out of the muck. Um, and, uh, That's a really cheesy way of putting it. It's, it's, um, well, I was trying to keep it in the same vein. <laughs> as Am you. I choosing this? Yeah, I didn't want it, to, I didn't want to leap off too far. I wanted to just, you know, we guess you got to cut this together at some point. What if that trash man is going to try to come take you away? <laughs> He might. <laughs> he might. Uh, but yeah, that's. I don't know where I was going with that. Well, you said that you feel that Hollywood respects people that are really almost uber extroverts that are just like on level ten. Mm -hmm. and, and what if you're in a mood where you're not in that space at all? You're almost like negative ten introverted. Right. How do you psych yourself out? How do you get into that mode without alcohol or any other substances? Oh, without have... substances. Oh, um, I don't know. I don't uh, even think there's any way to answer that question. More sleep? Or Miss less the audition. Sleep. Don't yeah. go. Don't go. Don't go. Don't go outside of your house. Um I recommend in Los Angeles never to leave your house <laughs> without drugs or alcohol ever. You'll really hurt yourself. It's pretty bad out there. <laughs> it's pretty horrible. You just should be pretty medicated. <laughs> well, medicated maybe, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's that's part of our job, you know. I mean, part of our job is to is to uh, I think our job is to fulfill what the writer has written, and so and so if the if the the job is to you know this character is supposed to be you know energetic and, and number ten at a ten, and you feel like you know that day for the audition you feel like I'm at a negative ten. That's why we, you know, that's why we studied acting, you know, and, and not, not, not that you have to, but I think that that's, you use your technique to get to that place where you're like, okay, you know what, I don't, I'm not feeling this today, but I'm going to go through these steps, that, you know, this is my process to try to get me to that place. What do you think? Yeah, no, I think, I think that's right. Yeah, that's why that's the, that's the, that's the professional element to it. Mm -hmm. That's being a pro. There's a lot of times you don't feel like you want to be it's a weird job I mean, there's a lot of times you not only do not feel like i don't have the energy to do this to to go out and you know play a scene where i'm this laughy funny guy who's making everybody in the room laugh not only do i not feel like doing that some days you're like i don't want anyone to look at me today like, right. i just want to 
crawl under a hole and put a blanket over my head and 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 you've got people fixing their hair and they're doing right. and it's just the, there's the there's the the room you know and suddenly everything goes quiet and the camera's rolling and the eyes of not all the not only all the people in the scene but the whole crew is just sort of being like waiting for this scene to take place it, it's really it's pretty it can it can be a very invasive and and bad feeling sometimes and yeah, it's a part of being a pro where you just have to kind of suck it up and, and do it anyway yeah I would say though I think that Working is actually vacation for me. You know, when I'm when I'm not working, when I'm unemployed, that's really when I, my work starts. You know, that's when I have to try to get it. And that's when I have to like you know focus on getting a job. And those that's tough. You know, like being unemployed as an actor, it, 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 those times, it's awful. It's tough. And so when I actually do work, that's when I can kind of relax and just have fun. And like this is what I this is what I want to do. You know, I, this is why I I go through those 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 grueling times of not working. You know, and so. For me, that's just that's just that's the that's the sugar on top, you know. Whenever I do get the chance to actually work, it's great. Should an actor rely on their agent to get them work? Should he? Or she? Yes, I fired I, my agent, so I'm screwed. Then. I think that no, I think that um, an an agent uh, in in this business is is a um, is a, a great commodity to have. You know, I thought you were going to say necessary evil. Is no, with the words you're going to use. No, I, I think that that agents can can the agents that work well that are you know good at their job they um, get you opportunities you know they get you into rooms and they can they pitch you and they talk to the people to producers and casting directors mostly to you know get you seen for for these auditions. Um, I, that being said, I would say that eighty five percent of my work that I do in my career has been on gone on my own. Um, just from relationships and, and, you know, there's so many small movies being made now that people just kind of call up and say, hey, I'm making this movie, it's, you know, a couple hundred grand, there's going to be a, a lot of police chases in it, and the police will maybe come after you, and... I can see it right now. Right? I feel like I'm there. I sometimes just imagine that a police really, officer really, really, driving. Really, right. just to paint a real picture, a sonic yeah. landscape, Trying to use the, sound, the natural soundtrack of the... You do. You did well. Thanks. Hey, yeah, great job. What does that work involve? Let's suppose you're going through a down period where work's not coming in. Mm -hmm. Maybe nothing's no emails from the agent or call. So, what type of things do you both do to drum up work for yourselves? Well, I, I write. I, I prefer not working. <laughs> so I'm just when the phone's you know, not ringing. If you've got to get out of the way, maybe you should move out of, out of LA and maybe get out of the way so other yeah. people that want to work, they could take those jobs. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'll yeah. think about it. Think about that. For next time you book a job, be like, hey. I'll pass. Give it to Joey. Give it to Joey. I'll take it. I yeah. eat it up. Where's his job? <laughs> Delicious. Aaron. Yeah, sorry, it was on the ground for a bit. Yeah, your jobs are always on the ground. <laughs> um, what did you ask? So what what types of things do you do? Oh, what do you do? Up? What do you do to drum up work? Oh, you write. I have a big drum. No, I uh, I write. You know, I think that I I go out and do some stand up now and then just to kind of I like to be and get up and and um and just perform. Uh, so, you know, so stand up helps or I do improv a little bit. Um, take class. You know, just to kind of keep my motor running. But uh, in terms of drumming on my own work. Um, beyond writing and things like that. Uh, I, just relationships, you know, and just kind of being out and, and, and going to screenings and, and film festivals are great. When we get to go to film festivals, you meet a lot of like cool filmmakers and people that are, you know, in the same kind of, uh, on the same path as you. So you, you know, exchange information and get to know people that way. What do you do? You just don't Don't do any of those things that you just mentioned. But it sounds good. It sounds like that's probably the right answer to give. Yeah. If you were contrasting answers, which would be his answer versus my answer, it's a much, much better answer. Your answer my would answer be is just kind of my answer just kind of like yeah, yeah, yeah. But you also uh, would like do you, like how often do you stop by your agents? You just said you fired your agent. Yeah, I don't have an agent. How did you get this last job? Uh, I have a manager. Oh, okay, that's good. Manager, yeah. But you sometimes you have to like you have to stop by your agents and your managers and kind of put your face in there. I think it's again. been about four years since I've seen my manager last face to face. Are you serious? Yeah. I, you know, I'm just not very, I don't do these things. I don't they have a Twitter account and I don't go to the manager's office. And yeah. I don't know. I should probably do it. I probably should get to work on these things. Yeah. I just hate doing it. Can't stand it. I like to live in the delusion that, that, that working 
you know, doing good work at the moment as best you can is the important thing. But that's probably totally bullshit in this day and age. I think that yeah, I think that you would probably have to do more than more than that. Yeah. Oh well. Oh well. Twitter, here I come. <laughs> Maybe I should tweet my agent right now. <laughs> hey, I fired you. Remember? Hey, agent, tweet on this. What do you even tweet? What do I say in a tweet? Hey, hey, hey guys, hey. getting interviewed right now. I could. That's what I could. I I could tweet. Be like, doing hey, interview right now. doing interview with for, Film Courage. Don't for forget to ego. check it out. Can't you just tweet this video? Put this video on a tweet. Tweet this. Tweet this. People would love that. Tweeters. Yeah. You should have a shirt that says "Tweet this." And it's got an arrow pointing down to your dick. Yeah, I should. Tweet I this. Should should have Hollywood. that. I don't know why I don't have that. It's kind of an injustice. I don't <laughs> have that shirt yet. Yet being the key word. Give me a few days, kids. And a sh and I may not have the shirt, but I will have it written in Sharpie on my chest. Exactly. Like, hey, oh, it's probably misspelled. Yeah, oh, yeah, certainly. <laughs> It'll be like backwards because I'm looking in the mirror. <laughs> tweet. How do you spell tweet? What does twat this mean? Twat this. Twit this.